for Egypt for Eid? I think probably the most important uh, thing that needs to happen is that it becomes very quickly clear that this is a transitional period of military rule. Mm -hmm. And what would it take to make that clear? I think you would need the formation of some kind of committee to amend or rewrite the Egyptian constitution. Uh, you would need some kind of process which would put in place elections uh, in three months, six months, a year, both for the National Assembly and the presidency. Uh, presumably, you would need to have this sequenced correctly so that first you have a referendum on a constitution, then you have the election of maybe the National Assembly, and then you have the election of the president. But if you don't have fairly clear, um, a, a, a fairly clear path to this happening, and there is a kind of indefinite period of uh, consultative committees and mm -hmm. mulling things over, I think people will start losing heart. And I think that the administration in Washington is quite focused on trying to make sure that now they use their leverage to do precisely that, get on a roadmap to democracy. What is the risk if the path is not made clear at this stage, do you think, Fareed? The risk for Egyptian democracy is that this is the moment where the crowd, where the street, where the people had maximum leverage. They've used it, they've got something, but what they've got to hope is that this does, doesn't end up being a symbolic victory. They need it to be a substantive victory. The symbolic victory was Mubarak leaving. The yeah. substantive victory is that the regime has transformed from what is still a military dictatorship into a liberal, secular democracy. Now, the military in Egypt is a trusted institution. It's not a democratic engine for change in Egypt. Um, is there confidence out there among observers that the military has not just the will, but the ability to usher true change in Egypt? Uh, it's a fantastic question, Hala, because uh, the reality is the military is deeply entrenched in the power structure. It is the power structure. It has enormous economic benefits that come from being... Uh, being the power structure. The military owns hundreds of factories, retired generals have lavish lifestyles. And are they going to give this all up very easily? No. And so the question is, how do you make that happen? I think what you have to do is to give the people, give civil society some platforms of power. Right now they have none. They're out there in Tahrir Square and it's great, but they don't have any, any uh, platforms or instruments of power. If they get the National Assembly, and if they get the presidency and they get the constitution in effect, that gives them platforms of power. And that will slowly then erode the military's enormous prerogatives and power. It's not going to happen overnight. And if yeah. you look at the case of Turkey, of Indonesia, you see that while the military receded from, from their paramount role, it took two decades in the case of bo both those countries and with a lot of pressure from the European Union, from the United States. So... This is good. This is a marathon, and we're just at the beginning. Not a sprint. Uh, w regarding Turkey, I mean, is Egypt potentially uh, a country that could model itself on Turkey with um, a democratic process, with uh, the tutelage, under the tutelage of the military? I mean, is that something that Egypt can look to as a model, do you think? Well, I think certainly Turkey has been a very successful model, uh, and I think it, it, there are elements of it that are, that are going to be similar. But let's remember, the Turkish military really ran the country uh, and ceded power reluctantly over two decades, largely because the European Union made clear mm -hmm. that there was no way Turkey was even going to be remotely considered for European Union membership as long as the military had this enormous role. And they had specific requests uh, the, the most important of which was only exceeded to two years ago, which was that, for, for example, the National Security Council not be a military-dominated uh, council, but a civilian-dominated one, that the prime minister chaired, not the, uh, not the head of the army, you know, all those kinds of things. So I would hope that Egypt can start from a slightly more secure place with firm civilian control over the military. The military is going to play a very large role, but in any democracy, in any modern democracy, the starting point has got to be that the man who, who, or the woman who makes the decisions as to war on, on ultimate decisions of war and peace is somebody elected by the people and not somebody who rose from the officer corps.